your excellency, and distinguished guests. The Māori Roll of Honour. List of dead, Gallipoli 1915. Private Kude Papuni, killed in action on the 6th of August 1915. Next of kin, Tapika Papuni, or Maramutu, or Portiki. We are the parents and the relatives of our Māori soldier youths, of both those who live and those who are dead. We know that their glory has been published throughout the earth and that their glory will descend to their descendants with an untarnished fame, just as it lives with us today. W. H. Tucker of Kaipara to Sir James Allen, Minister of Defence, dated the 9th of June, 1915. The correlations of those two statements are entwined by history, by whakapapa and by legacy. But let me now take you all on a journey. My mother, Annette, was raised by her grandparents, and she often shares a story with my sister and I. While she was growing up, hanging on the wall in her home was a framed medallion with the name Kude Papuni engraved on it. She never knew the significance of this, nor did she have the slightest inkling about who this Kude Papuni was. All she knew was that they shared the same last name. Dad, What's that picture hanging on the wall? Koro would just shh her and say, Toku kōtero a koutou nā mea pai ki te mahi, haere whai te hei hei. My girl, you have better things you could be doing. Go and chase the chooks or something. To my mother, the mysterious ornament on that wall became just that, as no one ever spoke about this taonga, let alone mentioned any war. And that is just the beginning of the journey I want to share with you all. It took this opportunity to present my speech to find out more about that framed taonga, about who it belonged to, where it came from, and why is it now hanging so proudly in one of my whānau whare. On the 16th of September, 1914, the Government of England communicated to the Government of New Zealand that a Māori contingent of approximately 200 men should go to war. Now obviously, as this call has come from the King of England himself, and as young, male Māori men of Aotearoa, these men felt the need to fight and to serve alongside the Pākehā people of their country. Private Kude Papuni, my uncle and newfound hero was one of these brave men. He was a part of the B Company in the first ever Māori or native contingent as it was and currently is recognised by. The first ever Māori contingent set sail from Wellington aboard the SS Waremu on the 14th of February 1915 and arrived in Egypt on the 26th of March 1915. One of the soldiers, Te Rangi Hiroa, made an impassioned plea upon their arrival. Our ancestors were a warlike people. The members of this party would be ashamed to face their people at the conclusion of war if they were to be confined entirely to garrison duty and not be given the fair opportunity of proving their mettle at the front. Senior officers, whilst impressed by the sentiment, unconvincingly sent the troops to Malta for further training. However, some three months later, the Gallipoli campaign came under extreme pressure, with casualties just mounting by the minute. This forced a change. A change in the imperial policy on native people's fighting, which meant that 16 officers and 461 other ranked troops of the Māori contingent set foot on the Gallipoli Peninsula on the 3rd of June, 1915. Several battles enveloped these Māori men, and in late August and by September, only 60 of the initial 477 men of the Māori contingent remained. However, with the return of sick and wounded, numbers were soon boosted to two officers and 132 men by the evacuation date 
in late December. Imagine that, 477 comrades at the beginning to just 134 at the end. One not present will never fully comprehend. Private Kude Papuni was never evacuated. He was killed. He was killed in action on the 6th of August 1915 in an August defensive night attack on Botops Hill, Gallipoli. Captain Henare Wainohu said to my uncle and the fellow troops at the number two camp the night before his death. Perhaps in a few minutes, boys, many of us may be dead, but you go forward with but one thought. Do your duty to the very last. And whatever comes, never turn your back on the enemy. Go through with what you have to do to the very utmost of your powers. Do your duty and uphold the ancient warrior name of the Māori. Private Kude Papuni abided by this until his dying breath. He fought with the mana and the integrity of being a Māori fighting for his country. So the framed medallion in the home in which my mother grew up in is for Private Kude Papuni, Soldier 16-493, awarded the 1914 to 1915 star, the British War Medal, the Victory Medal, and the Gallipoli Medallion. Now although this journey has ended, the legacy will live on, and I can proudly say that I have educated my whānau about the whakapapa, about the history, and about the legacy of one of my brave tipuna. 100 years on, we remember not only Kūrei Papuni and the men of the Māori contingent, but those men and women who served and continue to serve so valiantly for their country, their beliefs, and as Anzacs. We gather each Anzac Day, as we shall always gather, not to glorify war, but to remind ourselves of who we are and the freedoms we now possess, and to acknowledge the courage, the commitment, and the sacrifice of those who contributed so much in shaping the identity of this proud nation. Let those who come after see to it that his name be not forgotten. Thank you.